You know what? It's true. It's not too late to get into vinyl in a serious way. It's not too late to get into it. It's not too late to get back into it if you were into vinyl back a long time ago and you drifted away, the zeros and ones seduced you, but you're getting curious, you're, you're vinyl curious. And this turntable, <laughs> the Project Debut Pro S, might be just the ticket, just the ticket. First of all, it's beautiful. <laughs> it's just such an elegant, understated looking turntable. It's all matte black. Every surface of the turntable is matte black. And uh, the tone arm, is, it's a 10 inch tone arm. It's a bit bigger than most. The turn, turntable comes with a special project cartridge actually made by Ortofon for Project. It has a detachable head shell, so it's really easy to change cartridges. That's a big plus. I'm really into this. I hate being stuck with one cartridge. It's one of the best things about living with a turntable is you, you, get, the, you get this for a new sound, you get a new cartridge, you got a new sound. It's easy peasy. Oh, before I forget, yeah, there will be an Audiophiliac viewer system of the day later on in today's show. Now, this is a belt drive turntable. It has an aluminum subplatter beautifully finished. I mean, this, the machining on this inner platter is stunning. And then the platter itself is also aluminum and it has a damped ring on the underside of the platter. Again, nicely done. Then there's a thicker than average felt mat that sits atop that platter. It's easy to play 33 or 45 RPM records here. You don't have to move the belt. There's the, the rocker switch under the front left corner of the turntable is the on off switch and you can switch from 45 to 33 or 33 to 45. So the turntable itself, the plinth is a bit wider than average. I'll, I'll put down how wide it is right now and I'll put up complete specifications along with that width. But um, anyway, so it's a wide turntable. The feet, by the way, are adjustable so you can uh, balance out and level the top of the turntable, which is really important. It's, it's, it's easily overlooked that you should have the turntable as level as possible. And with these metal feet, it's very easy to do. It'd take you a minute to level this turntable. It's funny, Project makes a vast range of turntable models. Really affordable to really high end. This is in the affordable range. It's $1,199. But there's also a model, the Debut Pro, so what I'm doing is the S, but the Debut Pro looks like this, it's an, and it's $999, I believe. Uh, I think the Pro S is much sleeker, much, it's, I just love the look of this one. The cueing on this turntable is unusually smooth, really, it, the arm just floats down, stylus hits the groove very gently doesn't go, just go crashing in like a lot of turntables do, unfortunately. This one, very nicely done. A dust cover is included with the Pro S. When I do reviews, I always note where the product is manufactured. And in this case, it is made in the Czech Republic. Looking at the rear of the turntable, you'll see it has RCA output. So you can use any interconnect cable you like with this turntable. The Pro S does not have a built-in phone or preamp. You have to use an outboard one, which is really the right way to do it. This way you have options again, in terms of what the, the turntable will sound like. Now I use the Shit Manny, an original Shit Manny, but just to see what it's like, and that worked fine. But you know what? I wanted to hear everything this turntable could give me. So I use my reference phono preamp, which is a Parasound JC3+. Plus. Oh, so the last turntable I had here that would be comparable to this one was the U-Turn Orbit Theory. They're about the same price, uh, except that one is made in the United States, by the way. But it had a different cartridge. Everything about it was different, so I, and it was a while ago, so I can't mentally compare them. I like that turntable. I think this turntable just feels more solidly put together. I think the sound is more dynamic on this turntable, but it's not really fair to do comparisons spaced months apart with different cartridges on different turntables. I did compare the cartridge, the Project Picket 2. I compared it with my Audio-Technica VM95E, which is a cheaper cartridge. 
it, it it really didn't compare. The uh, Picket 2 was way better, was more dynamic, it had better bass, more impact, everything, and it was just a smoother response overall. So, and, and you know, the Audio Technica for $69 is pretty good. This one, the Picket 2, the Project Picket 2 is a much better car. You know, when I review a turntable, what it really comes down to is this. Do I want to play one record after another? Or after two or three, I'm kind of like, okay, I'm done. I'll take my notes and I'm out of here, right? But with this turntable, one record led to the next and the next and the next. The sound is very analog. It's warm. Yeah, it's on the warm side of neutral, but not blurry. And certainly it is transparent, but it does have that kind of analog glow which is what I want. I want to play a record. I want it to sound like a record. I want it to sound like a CD. I don't want it to sound like digital. I want it to sound, well, beautiful. And that's what this turntable achieved. You know, it's funny. When I, when I, when I started shooting today, I, I brought up this idea that if you've never been into vinyl, this is a good time to get in. And it is. And if you were in and then you got out and now you're thinking about getting back in, this turntable might be the one. Well, yeah, I think that's true. But I think in terms of amassing an LP collection now in 2022 and moving forward. Well, it's, uh, re you know, records can be expensive, but you know what? You go to thrift shops or yard sales, you can find really nice records for five or six bucks. That's not so hard to do. I still do that on a regular basis. I buy a lot of records on Discogs. I'm just having my mind. I want a certain record. I want to buy a Ramones record. I go to Discogs, I can find stuff for 10 bucks I'm perfectly happy with. You know, I find records for free on the street. Not lately, but it's happened many times in my life. And a year or so ago, maybe a couple of years ago, I found this copy of a Moody Blues record, In Search of a Lost Chord. I pick it up, I looked at it, it looked pretty clean. I take it home, I listen to it. This thing was great. It was a lot better than the copy I already owned. So I find free records. So. Don't let this thing that records are really expensive. I mean, they're expensive compared to free. <laughs> they're expensive compared to streaming or paying $10 a month to title or something. But <clears throat> yeah, you can amass a, a record collection that you'll enjoy for years to come for not a lot of money. So one of the first records I played was this one, this REM record, Automatic for the People. I'm playing the record and I'm thinking, you know what it does? It sounds like people playing together in a room. Not my room, <laughs> the, the studio, the space that they're in. It has a very live in the studio feel. It's vivid, it's immediate, it's exciting. Dynamics are really, really strong. The imaging is nicely focused. Top end, clarity, really nice. I Again, I'm thinking this is good. I am thoroughly enjoying myself. But I, I decided to do the switch right then and there and switch over to the Grado cartridge, to the Platinum 3, which happens to be the low output version. But you know what? It's not so low that you can't use it into a moving magnet input. So a standard moving magnet input. So that's what I did. And I played uh, REM again, and the sound took on more weight and more solidity and more balls. It was not as dynamic, actually, as the uh, Project cartridge. But in most other ways, it, it had more of uh, analog uh, beauty in it. The Grado did, you know. But the Grado was $400, so it's, it would be an upgrade. And obviously, there's many, many other cartridges that you could consider. But this is where I started. So the Picket 2 cartridge, uh, pre-mounted, so to speak, in, or integrated into a head shell, weighs 18.5 grams which is sort of average for that sort of thing. But you have to bear in mind that if you're going to use a heavier cartridge, like the Grado is pretty heavy, um, you're going to run out of room in terms of the adjust adjustability of the counterweight on this, car on this turntable. That's the one thing I would be a little concerned about is that heavy cartridges, it's going to be tough to balance it on this tone arm. The Grado just just eked out. It was it was in the acceptable range, but a heavier cartridge uh, would be kind of pushing it. Moving on with Shelby Lynn's LP here. Wow, this this is a stunning recording, sound quality wise and music quality wise. This is a 10, 10, 10. Uh, it was produced by Phil Ramone, a legendary producer, and the engineer was equally legendary, Al Schmidt. 
who I had the pleasure of uh, seeing give a talk many years ago at the Audio Engineering Society. This guy recorded Sinatra, everybody. He's an amazing engineer. And you listen to this recording, the Shelby Lynn, and she is all there, body and soul. And it's a very sparsely produced record. It's really just about the, these great tunes that she's doing, but it's her presentation and the overall uh, vibe of the session, how you feel it. You really do feel it. You sense her really putting thought into these songs the way she's singing them and stuff. It's just a goosebump experience. I'm getting goosebumps just telling you about it. So I'm sure you can stream it and hear the music. But if you really want to hear what's on this recording, you really got to hear it on vinyl. I have a feeling, I should have checked, I think this was an analog recording, but I could be wrong. So to continue, I play this one, Dr. Lonnie Smith. It's on Blue Note. It's a jazz record. It's a funk record. It's got just great drive to it. No, unfortunately, it's his last album, but he had plenty of spunk, man. He's really laying it out. And as a matter of fact, he had, as a guest vocalist, Iggy Pop on a couple of tracks. And some tracks are live uh, at the Jazz Standard here in New York City. It's, a, it's, a, it's all over the place, but it all hangs together as an album. Like I said, it's on Blue Note. Great, great stuff. So I'm playing it on the uh, Debut Pro S, digging it. I thought, you know what? I can take the cartridge, because at this point I was using the Grado Platinum. I could take that off the Debut Pro S and put it on my Techniques SL1200G. So I'm going to play basically the same cartridge on both turntables. It's easy to do and compare and contrast. Now, of course, the Techniques turntable is $4,000. So it's considerably more expensive than the Debut Pro S. And what did I hear? Well, even a bigger, weightier, more full-bodied sound. The, the Debut Pro S, by comparison, was lighter and leaner overall in its tonal balance. And in some ways more vivid sounding than the Techniques, but the Techniques just had more like, just get out of my way, here I am. It's just gonna lay this music out. So they're doing different things. Returning to the debut Pro S, I played this one, Wilco, the album, and I was using the project cartridge. And uh, there was something about uh, Jeff Tweedy's vocals. He's so, uh, real sounding to me. He's so vulnerable. He's, there's just an emotional connection I get off of his, his recordings. And the better the turntable and the better the system, the more I feel that. And this turntable was no slacker in that regard. So, you know, one record led to the next, to the next, to the next. I listened to some really weird stuff I don't want to tell you about because it might frighten some people. But anyway, I was having a good time with this turntable. And like I said, not just because of the way it sounds, but because of the way it feels when you use it. It's just a really well thought out design. Okay, so now it's time for, so Steve, what do you really think of the Project Debut Pro S belt drive turntable? I think it's pretty darn good. Like I said, I'm seduced by the way it looks. I love the way it feels. It has a very exciting sound. And I think at its price, for a made in Czech Republic turntable, I think $1,199 seems very fair to me. So I do recommend it. And now it's time for the Audiophiliac viewer system of the day. These incredible pictures come to us from Dan. He lives in Marietta, Georgia. His CD player is an Opera Audio Consonance Reference 2.2. Preamp is Maple Tree Audio 2A SE. The amplifiers are Audio Mirror 45 Watt SETs. Speakers, Pure Audio Project Trio 15. Room treatment is by GIK Acoustics. Thank you, Dan. <laughs> okay, we are back. My name is Steve Guttenberg and I am the Audiophiliac. I'm so glad you're here. I'm so glad you watched up to this point of the video. So now I have to say, I have to put up my hand and ask you, would you like to join my Patreon? To do so is super easy to do. The address is on the screen right now. There's a link in the description below. Um, and that's what, one of the ways this channel keeps going. This is my job, making videos. You know, I'm not a, a lawyer or 
professor or something like that. I make my living making videos on YouTube. And, and thanks to Patreon, it just makes it more doable. It definitely does. So I would appreciate your support. And as I've said recently, yes, the Audiophiliac podcast is back. Mostly the same as the videos, just the audio version. But you can listen, you know, when you're cooking or driving or whatever. And you can hear them on Spotify or Apple Podcasts or iHeartRadio, all the usual places, or my own podcast website, which is linked to below. If you like the videos, please hit the like button and uh, subscribe to the channel. 225 of you, 225,000 of you guys have already done that. That number is mind boggling to me. You know, it took a long time for me to hit 10,000 subscribers. That was easily six, seven months. So to get to 225,000 in five years, literally I could not have done it without you guys. So thank you for your support. I really, really do hope to see you back here again very, very soon. Bye-bye.